Welcome back to Invest Global. Today we're actually going to do a deep dive on IOTA, going into their tokenomics, their roadmap, their white paper, all these different things around the project, really focusing on the fundamentals, their use cases as far as you know the marketplace of data, different things with smart cities, and really innovation for the future of blockchain technologies, which I absolutely love, by the way, because I talked about this in a recent video called Central Bank Digital Currencies, CBDCs, how a lot of central banks, a lot of governments around the world are going to try and use this blockchain technology to their advantage. And they're going to really kind of go against this decentralized model, rather just having their own blockchains that only they can see the transactions on, kind of defeating the whole purpose of open source. But IOTA is beautiful because it essentially provides the infrastructure for any country who wants to. Uh, you know, build the smart cities of the future to actually use their their infrastructure and kind of go from there. It, it still has a relatively low market cap for what they're planning to do. You know, think about a market cap of a country, like even a small country like Sardinia. Um, when you compare it with something like IOTA with like a five billion dollar market cap, it's interesting because again, they're basically providing this platform for different. I really think about this seriously as different countries using this platform to innovate. And again, it'll really kind of show which countries are really for the people by using something that's actually decentralized versus which countries are just in it for their own personal gain using a centralized model of the blockchain. So again, we'll see how this all plays out, but uh, it'll be interesting to watch this video back you know, in 10 years and see exactly which countries actually use this um, and, and what also you know companies and different kind of organizations are gonna use IOTA. So we will talk about their token here on CoinMarketCap uh, in a little bit, their roadmap, the industry marketplace, the ecosystem, but uh, first, I just want to start off on the website just for some basics. Um, essentially, what they're planning to do here is connecting all this data using the blockchain. We have this problem currently with congestion. Think about it like, like a mom and pop business. They have all these different data uh, sets. Let's say, like for example, taxes. Let's just take that set of data. Really, anything is a set of data. You could talk about invoices as data. You could talk about just new customer inquiries as data. You could talk about um, employee things as data. Um, but connecting all of these things in a, in a centralized manner is the problem. A lot of like mom and pop businesses, for example, has have these boxes or you see these like file cabinets with just tons of paper files. And it's like you need to digitize that. That's the beauty of something like the IPFS, the interplanetary file system with Filecoin. But really what uh, IOTA is doing is not necessarily to store the data, but rather connecting all of this together. So as they talk about kind of here in this in this little slide thing going on there, securing data, IOTA protects the uh, integrity and all these things. I'm empowering people, so navigating securely in their digital lives. All interesting things here. Um, but essentially, we'll, we'll kind of move down and in, in, I'll, I'll explain it in the way that they explain it and then kind of break it down. So uh, essentially, an open, fee-less data and value transfer protocol, IOTA has fundamentally re-engineered distributed ledger technology, um, enabling secure exchange of both value and data without any fees. Okay, so again, there's a lot of buzzwords in the cryptocurrency industry. It's important to kind of separate what is important from what is not important, okay? So that's one of, the, in my opinion, the most important things is uh, is kind of getting rid of these like buzzwords and just breaking this down into, okay, everybody should be able to understand this. You shouldn't just have these buzzwords around, uh, around all these different projects, but rather really kind of just synthesize what they're saying here. So what are they saying? When they say a distributed ledger, that's essentially the blockchain, okay? So in, instead of having a ledger, for example, just the United States having a ledger of every single person who's paying taxes. Instead, a distributed ledger is everyone can see who pays taxes. Or instead of the uh, country just saying, okay, these are all the taxes in one ledger, who we're going to, um, like different sectors that we're going to give this money to. So the military, maybe the police department, maybe the fire department, all these different things, maybe to roads, um, to new like farmland innovation, agriculture. Um, instead of having that be centralized ledger that's kind of hidden behind closed doors, a distributed ledger meaning everyone can see it. So that's what I, I'm a fan of. If a country is going to tax, I think they should tell you exactly where your tax dollars are going. That is huge. Um, I'm As far as politics, I don't talk about it too much on this channel, but I'm much more libertarian than anything else. Uh, but again, I, I try not get idealistic in this. I just try and take a balanced approach. So IOTA, they've re-engineered this distributed ledger technology, enabling secure exchange of both value and data. Okay, so we're going to explore kind of what they mean by this value, really, okay? And what's interesting is when, when you're looking at what something is worth, it's really how is your value structure? So on a day-to-day -day basis, everything you do is, is, is kind of an internal, even if you're not consciously doing it, it's a cost-benefit analysis of what's valuable. 
So for example, if, if you choose to click off this video, you believe something else has more value than watching this. But if you continue watching this, you believe that potentially something like this and in innovative technology might have more value than going and watching, I don't know, whatever TV show you're going to watch, like a cartoon or something. I, I don't know what people watch nowadays. <laughs> I don't really spend a lot of time on uh, Netflix or Hulu or any of these things. Um, but the, the deal is, is people, your attention is constantly fluctuating between different hierarchies of value, essentially. Everything is a hierarchy. Um, and where your value is going is very important. And having decentralized data and value transfers is, is pretty powerful. So uh, again, a lot of big claims. Um, they have smart cities. Uh, each of these could honestly kind of be their own individual video. I, I'm happy to do a detailed video on any one of these aspects if you're interested in it. But um, let's talk about this. So track and trace. Ba, ba, ba. Let me go back here. Uh, that's what I was interested in, the track and trace. Global trade. This is on like uh, supply chains, okay? This is actually really, really interesting. Um, so share status throughout the supply chain, prevent data from the source. So something like uh, Origin Trails, if I remember that correctly, um, is, is working on this, especially with supply chains, because there's a lot of problems here. Look at the video I made on the semiconductor um, computer chip shortage. That's a massive issue in supply chains where they don't really have this honed in yet because it's not all on the blockchain. It's not open, It's not like an open ledger. Rather, it's company to company. It, it's it, and, and then there's all these different companies working together. There's all these different management issues. Customs and border management, um, upgrade trade certificates for internal exchange, digital twin. Man, they need to allow you to be able to pause this. What the heck? Digital twins, turn any product pallet or container into uh, consignment into a digital twin. Okay, that is fascinating. So essentially, think about it as, you know, a lot of people do this thing where they like pre-order like, uh, like a shoe that's super hyped up or a piece of clothing that's super hyped up and buy a bunch of them. And they sell these back and forth, you know, called like flipping or whatever you do. Um, so let's say like someone bought, I don't know, whatever the hyped up shoe is. It, instead of having the physical shoe holding it in a warehouse, why not be able to have that tokenized and keep it at, at whatever factory? So instead of having them to ship it to you and then after that you can sell it on whatever second party um, marketplace, rather having a tokenized version of that. So the token is a claim on one of the shoes and then you can literally transfer the token to whoever the other person is and have it shipped directly to them. So this is just like a, a way to do this with this digital twin, which I think is very interesting. And that's really when it comes down to value. So when things of value happen. So uh, again, this this idea of let's say like you have to transfer grain or barley, like here in this region of Turkey, for example, they grow a lot of barley. And let's say this barley needs to be transferred to Ethiopia. Okay. So if this is going to happen, there's a lot of complex things that have to happen in between. But let's say you have a digital twin, a tokenized version of this. Well, essentially, you can have this claim and track it on the blockchain each step of the process instead of having to call up, okay, the border control in Syria or the border control in uh, as it's going through Istanbul. All, all these different things cause for a lot of problems. So moving on here to the IOTA ecosystem, I was going to keep this video s somewhat short. So we'll kind of move through these things uh, fairly quick and kind of go through the most important things. I hope you understand the basic kind of framework around this is essentially they're, they're managing data and value and kind of ha having a layer two onto the analog version of things. So think about anything that is analog, the digital version of it is, is infinitely superior. Think about the analog version of mail. Okay, so literally me sending you a piece of mail versus me sending you an email. I can send you an email like this, especially if you're using something like Proton Mail, which is fully decentralized, by the way. Highly recommend Proton Mail. If you don't, so many people just uh, opt in for these like uh, free email services. Proton Mail is much, much better. Um, but, and then adding another layer onto that is, let's say something like uh, the the analog version of books versus eBooks, or the analog version of, um, you could say, going from taxis to Uber, you could say going from uh, hotels to Airbnb, any of these kind of analog things going into the kind of digital version, the digital version is so much more superior because you have more kind of open source. You get to see what's really going on versus like on a taxi, you have no idea this guy's credibility. This guy could be a crazy guy who's had a terrible day versus on Uber, you can see all the rankings and things like this. So again, that's kind of like going from the digital to analog version of a uh, value transfer and data transfer. So IOTA ecosystem is here to house the community. So you can join the ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. Untangle care. So the, these are like examples of projects they've had on here. Um, they have all these tutorials, so kind of interesting there. All right, so this is the industry marketplace. First, autonomous and decentralized. Let's see, discover how the industry marketplace acts as an int integrated hub to enable version 4.0 industry. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to see a detailed video on this, I can do it, but I'm not going to do too much in this. Um, I'll just talk about this. Um, the industry marketplace is a vendor and industry neutral platform, automating the trading of physical and digital goods and services. Okay, so again, very, very interesting when you look at like automated market makers. Um, and like I was saying, instead of having a, 
instead of having the there's all these middlemen in the supply chain you have to understand this like let's say you go into your local target or whatever your, your local kind of uh superstore is for them to have that product it has to go from the warehouse before that it was at the manufacturer so the manufacturer typically goes to a middleman and then the middleman goes to the warehouse and the warehouse then it typically goes to the store they sell it in bulk well think about it is go to the very beginning in the blockchain skip all the middleman and then them the the manufacturer what if they go hey wait a second we don't need all these middlemen let's just do e-commerce Let's have a tokenized version of this so the end the end user gets a better price on it and there's not all this supply chain issue because think about all the costs that that arise there. That's basically what I do with Amazon is I go straight to the distributor, have them ship it to an Amazon warehouse, and then Amazon ships it directly to the buyer. So it's it's basically only – there's only one person in the middle and it's Amazon. Amazon FBA is very, very automated. That's kind of a beautiful thing there. But as things kind of evolve down the road, I think – will even be able to skip Amazon. You can go straight from the manufacturer to the end user and think about, again, all the cost that you're basically freeing up there and, and those costs basically can be saved by the end user and hopefully go to things to better the community, better the economy and everything like this. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the roadmap. I, I hope you kind of understand what they're doing there, but that's kind of the idea. Is you're skipping this middleman, cutting out the middleman, having things be more open sourced. Shirched. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's see, let's see about this. Man, all these projects always have these like interesting little names here. Is this gonna open up in a new tab? Okay, so let's let's look at this. So this is the last update was February 2021. Man, you guys need to update your stuff. You need to, the March has gone on, we're almost done with April. Um, IOTA 1.5 main net uh, intermediate stage before uh, Cordical is complete. Okay, so they have their mainnet launch. They have WOTS to ED two 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 five five one nine. Um, so these are their their goals from this. As I talk about in the how to do your own research video, it's always important to look back at roadmaps. So not necessarily looking at what they're doing now, but when you look at back things, you get to look at their history. Have they followed through? Have they t hit all the datelines? And that'll give you a better kind of perspective on will they hit these things coming up? And you can kind of make a trade around this. Like okay, if if they can really, let's say, for example, before this release, let's say you were investing in January, when you saw, okay, they're going to have their UTXO, they're going to have auto peering, they're going to have a white flag approach. Let's invest based on the thesis around these. Again, this is just for, purely for example. Um, but the thesis is, okay, hopefully they'll complete all these early because in the past they've done this. But again, it's, it's all probabilities. It's never certainties with, uh, with projects. So uh, yeah, they have reusable addresses. See, they've completed all these things. It's actually pretty awesome. Internal test net dust protection. Uh, let's go back to the roadmap and then we'll wrap this up with the IOTA token. All right. So they have Chronicle B streams. So you can kind of see everything here. Let's see. Yeah, everything was updated on, yeah, February 20th. So it's important, you know, I, I would personally like to see them more active, but that's a good kind of a, uh, you, could, you could call that like I, I guess you, that's kind of a mixture between fundamental and technical or fundamental and sentimental analysis, really. And another great thing with sentimental analysis, by the way, is how many people are watching this, how many people that have it on their watch list, which is 165,000 people, close to 166,000 people. It's ranked number 27, has that uh, fairly large market cap that I was talking about in the beginning of uh, what, four, four and a half billion dollars around there. Um, at the time of recording, this is $1.64. It is a bit down as most altcoins are down. But it, uh, it provides for an interesting opportunity because that's one thing I didn't mention with the tokenomics with this. All the tokens are distributed. So the, you see the fully diluted is the same as the current market cap because that max supply is the same with the circulating supply. So that's, that's important to take in mind. Um, volume is actually pretty low, um, to be quite honest. But uh, let's see. A, a lot of people are using this token. They're not necessarily, um, they're not necessarily like uh, trading this actively, in my opinion. Now, this is a very interesting project because it kind of fits in the same category as one chain bit shares um what was the other one we talked about there's, there's a couple others that are kind of in this category that had this crazy pump in 2017 but haven't quite reached that peak where everything else in 2017 that's pumped has gone way beyond that that peak and a lot of these newer projects are just you know it's it's like this run it's, it's literally like this is what's happening with all these new projects um just going ballistic but this is kind of consolidating down. So it's just an interesting opportunity if you believe in it fundamentally. Again, not financial advice. Obviously, you should do your own research. But if you're curious on an individual aspect of this project, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll do another video on like doing some technical analysis and a price prediction. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for IOTA. Again, ticker symbol uh, M-I-O-T-A, if I remember correctly. Yeah, M-I-O-T-A. That's all for this one. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, button all, invest global. And until next time.